We see the future of red meat being premium products, you know, that are underpinned by traceability. Also, we see the carbon story being involved in brands. Um, we also see, you know, the sustainability through environment becoming part of the one picture. It'll be what you need to get on a retailer globally. And as a producer, you know, we want to be on the front foot of it. Uh, my name's Tom Ball. We're uh, coming from Kinross Station based at Holbrook, where uh, yeah, our business Lampro is run, um, sitting with his Rosie McKenna and Sophie Angus. We've come from a merino-based industry. Now we're very much meat sheep focused. You know, our whole basis of actually be separating ourselves from the wool industry and having standalone meat sheep that are focused on producing meat with little focus on wool. The key traits we've selected increase improved productivity. Remembering we have two types of sheep, maternal and terminal breeds. Yeah, the maternal is probably where most of the money's made and we've seen significant improvements over time. Back 20 years ago, we couldn't join new lambs successfully. This year, we've scanned 160% in our yielding use, which is a huge productivity gain over two decades. I think one of the key drivers in the productivity here has been embracing technology as it evolves. Embracing genomics each year as well now that it's becoming quite an important part of our business, along with EIDs has definitely played a big part in. There's no way we'd be able to capture as much data as we do without EID tags. One of the early things we did was actually did a lot of consumer data. So we actually did consumer sampling through universities in New England, and we actually basically got consumers to eat meat and start ranking them. And what you get to see, there was a huge difference between their overall liking of meat. So really we saw marbling of actually controlling the genetics, controlling nutrition, and being able to offer consumers a higher level experience through controlling those things. And that's really what our brands have done. Willow Bend in the States, Kinross Station in a number of countries. But it's a well-trodden road. Beef went down that path 20 to 30 years ago. Lamb doesn't have a high end, you know, and that's where over a number of years we wanted to take lamb up that next level and marbling was our vehicle to do that. As technologies move, genomic data allows us to capture that data at young ages, in essence, without having to kill the animal. Therefore, a genomic test can all of a sudden improve the accuracy of a marbling result from 45 to nearly 60%. That literally started with 20 lambs a week going to high end butchers, growing that to go to restaurants, doing that in Australia, then rolling that out globally. Every week we're going down and um, testing clients' lambs for IMF using a machine called the SOMA, and we will look at exploring further technologies like the MEQ probe. We take that sample every week, every single carcass that comes across the table, and giving that feedback back to clients in the form of um, an average IMF for that consignment. And they're really excited about where their IMF's heading in their flock and they want to know how they can improve. And then that also links back to their ASBV selection when it comes to choosing their rams. The good thing about that data, it's not just genetic. You know, it's, it's highly influenced by how happy the lambs were, which encourages them to grow. You know, if lambs haven't been in a good environment, we see that come through in the marbling. Marbling, you know, we often see really well-grown lambs that have been in a really good environment will have the high marbling score. So many of the things we do from an animal selection point of view have a positive carbon benefit. Twinning, for example, is a huge driver. Having a ewe that emits for a year, if she produces two lambs, it is so much more efficient from the farmer from a financial basis, but more importantly, it's from a carbon point of view. You know, we got one emitter producing twice as many lambs. And growth rate's another one. The quicker an animal hits its weight target, the less time it's gonna be emitting for. When you look at the hardcore objective measurement of carbon, so many things we're doing now are already contributing in that already. This year we actually started our carbon based lighting program looking at what we currently emit as a business, as a property, as a farm, and then letting the data that comes back from that influence um, management decisions going forward so we can work towards our common goal of reaching carbon neutrality going into the future. Grazing manager for us, we're, money, we're 80% deep rooted perennials, you know, a real carbon sink, but also, you know, maintaining ground cover is king for us, particularly in those dry years. How do you manage ground cover? Bringing animals in, you know, confining animals in hectares that are still very comfortable, but they're not degrading the landscape when things get tight. 
In terms of environmental verifications, we've gone with a program called Ecological Outcome Verification, which is connected to the Land to Market brand over in the States. The core of it really is looking at biodiversity, which is more than just looking at carbon, it's looking at the whole ecosystem and how we can support it from the microbes and the bugs in the soil through to the plants and then going on to native species. In the eye of the consumer over in the States, which is where our Willow Bend product goes to, it really is the gold standard. And playing in that premium market, that's where they want to spend their money. They want um, to know that the land that they're eating has come from a regeneratively verified farm. It allows us to tell our story with the data that they collect through that process. When we start looking at our measures, being EOV and also the carbon benchmark, the two have got to go together. You can become carbon efficient by planting our whole property to pine trees, but all of a sudden our ecosystems decline. And we've got to get that balance. By using the EOV, we've actually got a clear carbon focus on reduction, but we've also got a focus on maintaining you know, the, the local ecosystem. So they're looking at um, our soil health, looking at the microbes, carbon, water infiltration, the bugs that actually exist within the pasture, um, really looking at things from the ground up. So looking at pasture species and how we maintain wildlife corridors on the farm. So everything does act as a really cohesive and thriving ecosystem. The practices that we already had in place that were important to, um, was maintaining ground cover was a huge one and ensuring the pasture species that we are encouraging are perennial, deep tap-rooted systems and making sure stock are grazing to an appropriate level and then moving them on. I think having trees is a really you know, underestimated benefit for livestock. Um, there's no doubt, you know, on a cold, wet, windy day, lambs being able to get out into a, in a tree plantation has certainly helped with lamb survival as well. From a profitability standpoint, I think perenniality is really important with the cost structures in ag. You know, sowing stuff each year, using huge amounts of chemical is really something of the past where you know, a lot of these pastures on this farm have been here for 30 plus years. And I think that's a really important part from an environmental standpoint for sequestering carbon, but it's also from a profitability point of view, they're costing us nothing. By underpinning through GAP certification, you know, we've got an independently certified way of measuring what we do on farm is in the animal's best interest. Link that with carbon benchmarking, link that with ecological outcome verification. We've then got a full profile of tools. When someone buys our lamb, you know, they can tick a lot of boxes in welfare, environmentally, and it tastes really good. I think we've done a, we've got a really good track record in improving profitability through increased productivity where we growth rate, lambing percentage, coupled with a consumer focus. And those two need to go together. And really using that and telling our story, our clients are coming on the ride, they're very proactive. There's no complacency in their role in the, in the global food system.